Greetings and welcome to the Shabiti Uganda e-learning channel. Uh, this is Roger Samukalele and today uh, we are going to be looking at the sample papers. You have recently released some sample papers. When you search, you'll find um, sample papers of UNEB. And particularly, we are going to be looking at the paper of ICT, the website number. I've already downloaded uh, the papers and uh, they are here. You can download from the UNEB website. I have all these papers here. Now, they were uploaded with a .rural zip extension. So I found a 7-zip. There's like a software called 7-zip. You can be able to download it and then you right click on all and say extract to star slash. So it will extract for you all of them. Now when it extracts, our interest is in ICT. Now in ICT, uh, particularly we are going to uh, paper 2. Now paper 2, uh, when you open it, you'll find um, instructions saying that there are some support files which are provided. It has been in A level now, it is in all level support files. And also learners are given a CD where they will put work. That means they expect to give the, to hand in uh, files, uh, just like they hand in the Microsoft Word, Excel, even website should be HTML uh, files and pictures in one folder. So uh, the question, unlike the old curriculum, is scenario based. They don't tell you which pages to create, but they give you a scenario. Like in this case, they are talking about a school website which has uh, academics, projects, sports. So a learner should be able to know and also they want a form. So a learner should be able to read, understand, and also utilize the support um, files that they are provided. When you scroll down, you realize there are some support files also. And uh, these support files uh, here, uh, they are just pictures and uh, they are being provided. Uh, they are in some are in .jpg, other is in jf. That means expect learners to know file extensions and how to convert uh, pictures from different formats. They have also provided the here expected response. So the examiner has created some by open. This is the kind of website that they have created um, in line as a sample website. Uh, so it has academics page, um, the hyperlinks are working, projects, sports, application, just a few pages. And on this page there is a form and up here there is a, a marquee. So we are going to see if we can be able to do uh, such a website uh, during this session. And also one thing I also wanted to take note is there, uh, there, there is a... <coughs> There the, the, the is a guide, a uh, scoring guide, which is also handy to look at. In item two, uh, they are looking at a learner using any one web authoring application. And they have not specified which web application to use, they, but they are saying a learner should use a web authoring application. Now, some teachers think uh, Notepad is a web authoring, Notepad is a text editor. Uh, it doesn't uh, specifically have features of web authoring, so it is just a generic text editor for typing text. Uh, for any purpose, not necessarily for web design, although you can use it for HTML, but uh, there are some web authoring applications that we are going to be looking at, which can help us to create the pages, titles, link the pages, and uh, organize content. So the marks are given for competences, basing on the level of what the learner has managed to achieve. Now, I have been following the issues of web design for some time. I wrote an article um, some years ago, that is 2018, on the website of ICT Teachers Association, where I was looking at the various web authoring softwares, alternatives to Publisher. As you all know, uh, Publisher, um, I actually shared something about Publisher in web design uh, in, in one of my books that I, that I had made. Um, in this book, I was, I was showing how to use Publisher to do um, web design. And uh, many teachers were using this publisher uh, to make a website. Yeah, but uh, publisher, the way it was made, uh, it is like the way you make a calendar or the way you make a uh, business card. This thing is for printing. So learners could not have any knowledge on HTML, uh, maybe just some little HTML. So it, you could make a website and this is something we used to do for some time. But now uh, Microsoft uh, when they released 2010, 
they discontinued web authoring. And one of the reasons they said was the print and the web are different. So they said, let publisher remain for printing work, certificates what, and uh, uh, for web design, they say the web has changed, they cannot continue. Those websites, you can never see any website which has been made with publisher. Yeah, so they suggested using a software called Expression Web. And um, when they expect Expression Web, I also uh, wrote about it here. This was Expression Web. And I even made a tutorial on YouTube, uh, which had a lot of views about Expression Web. But the challenge that came in with Expression Web is also, after some time, uh, Microsoft abandoned it. Actually, in 2012, Microsoft abandoned Expression Web. It remained there for some time for download, but right now you cannot even download it. They even disabled the, the download link. So uh, only people who have all the old softwares who can be able to get it. And we cannot teach learners things uh, which, um, which ended. So one of these uh, people who wrote said, RIP Expression Web, your master never understood your value. Expression Web was a very good one. And um, teachers, some teachers are still using it but uh, it is something of the past. So now, what do we use? What do we use? So in this article, I talked about many other applications. Um, even we have applications like Blue Griffon. I remember one of the workshops we had in Imbali, we looked at Blue Griffon. But when you go to it also, it says uh, goodbye friends. After 15 years of existence, it is time to say goodbye to Blue Griffon. It was also another tool that was being used and um, the reason why the, 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 this man closed it, he said that he, um, he cannot continue pushing it, okay? So, um, Blue Griffon should become an online app, but I don't have the time and will. Things are, we are moving to online. So, you see the, the publisher dying, the expression web, the, the offline uh, web, web authoring tools were all dying. Now, we have one tool which is called WordPress, which was basically um, going to be talking about WordPress. It emerged, WordPress emerged as an online blogging tool, but now it has grown and can now be used also offline. It has now become the most popular tool. Um, uh, there are many other tools here, <laughs> including others, those of Brigham and Remove and others, they're in this part of others. But WordPress has 63% per, per, per percent and, and growing over 8 million websites. Why? Because one, it is free and open source. Some of the other tools are not, are not free. For example, uh, there is um, this tool of uh, Dreamweaver. It was also one of the tools that you could do, that was very, very popular. The, um, uh, Dreamweaver, 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 Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver was bought. I had also written about it somewhere. Uh, yeah, it was here. Uh, Adobe buys Micromedia. Dreamweaver was bought by Adobe and was bundled on Adobe Studio. So it is also there, but it is very expensive. Yeah, but WordPress is free and open source. Two, it can work both offline and online. So I'm going to be showing you how to use it offline in this tutorial. And it can work on online servers as well. The same tool you use to make a website, it is also on an online server. It is the most popular right now. It has a lot of themes and plugins which you can use, including a plugin which can make your website to be put on a CD when it is offline without needing any hosting, as we are going to be seeing. It has a provision for both coding and drag and drop, unlike Dreamweaver, and unlike the publisher, which was only mainly uh, drag and drop. And also, it has a vibrant, supportive community. This is the most biggest advantage. It has a community, WordPress has what we call WordPress meetups and WordCamps, which are organized. So now I'm going to be showing you how do we make this website using WordPress. Now, we are, to use WordPress, you download the files. I've already downloaded the files of uh, WordPress. You download a file called ZAMP, which is um, uh, a server software that you need because WordPress alone does not run alone. It requires you to have a uh, ZAMP. <coughs> So you can be able to uh, download ZAMP and um, you can get ZAMP um, and uh, you download it. You go to this one on, on SourceForge. SourceForge is um, the, the best site to go and get ZAMP. And you can be able to download um, the latest version. Now, in the case you have all the computers, 
um, like a computer having Windows 7, even Windows XP, you just go and download an older version. There are versions here, so you just click on ZAM for Windows, and then you can download the latest version 8.2. If it is not running on your computer, maybe your computer is a bit old or doesn't have uh, Windows updates, you can go and get an old version of 2020, or you can go and even get an old version of 2016, until when you get a version which will work for you. So, you download ZAM, and also, after that, you also download uh, WordPress itself. Uh, WordPress. Um, now, this downloading is not for students. This one is for the lab uh, technician who is in the lab, is setting up the computers. So, just like other softwares, we download them on internet. So, you click here and you download. Now, after downloading WordPress, it has where there is extend. We have what we call themes and plugins. So, you click on themes and you go there and you download. Um, theme the theme that we recommend most is called astra it is uh, the most popular theme with over one million uh downloads uh, over one million downloads you can be able to check it out so you can download that one and also you can also download plugins now the plugins that we recommend uh we recommend several plugins and um, i've downloaded them here uh one of them is called uh contact form just type contact form you get it uh, you can also download the Elementor. Elementor is uh, the, the leading ele Elementor. Elementor is the leading page builder, page builder, uh, website builder. It runs on WordPress, and also you can download the header footer and uh, header footer Elementor, and then simply static. Uh, all these ones you can be able to download them. They are all free. Now, after downloading, what do you do? You need it to install so the first thing you do is to install ZAMP. I'm a bit fast because I want the video to be a bit short. Now you install ZAMP, it will say welcome to ZAMP, and then it will ask you to, to first uh, this notification and then you go ahead and install. Now for me, I've already installed it, so I'm not going to continue the installation there. So once you install it, you need to start these services. We have what we call uh, MySQL and then we also have what we call Apache. Okay, so these two services should be started. So that is one thing that you needed to do. Now, when you run and install this, in case you run into an issue, just know either the version you have is not compatible, you can go and get an older version, or if you have any other applications which are uh, stopping it, yeah, but should be able to run very well. Now, this is like your local server, local host. It will make your computer to be able to uh, run uh, a dynamic website. One of the advantages um, of WordPress, you can do static and also dynamic websites. So after you've done this, you click on Explorer. Explorer will open for you inside uh, the serving area in Zamp where the websites should be uh, 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 hosted. So you open there and then you look for a folder called htdocs. Okay, that's where you are going to host your website. Okay, so after doing that, you now go and get WordPress and put it here. Okay, so you go and get WordPress. So you right click on WordPress and you can also um, uh, extract. Okay, you can extract. Yeah, so when you say extract, uh, it should be able to extract all. And um, for me, uh, uh, there was already an extract version there, but it should be able to extract very fast. You say yes, and then you can extract using the normal file manager or you can extract using 7-zip. So when you extract like that, you will be able to find uh, inside another folder called WordPress. This inside the folder called WordPress is the one that you get. So you right click on it and cut. Um, Cutting will make it move faster, or you can copy, and then you come and paste it here. Uh, you paste it here, and uh, it will be able to move. So this WordPress folder moves from this other side where you extracted, and comes, you are hosting it inside HDDocs. Now this folder of WordPress, you right-click on it, and you rename. Okay, so you right-click on it, and then you say, rename. And you can give it a name, like student1, okay? So you can have a folder for student one, you can have a student a folder for student two. If you're having any computing, you can even put it like 10 times this WordPress. And then each learner, each computer, you label that this is student one, student two, student three. And all learners will be able to run a particular version so that they don't run the same uh, version. So after hosting, we are finished hosting our 
our our website so we come and then we open and then we say local host now when you say local host zamp will open and you'll be able to show you uh, this other interface so you can be able to click on php admin php admin is uh, the, 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 the the one that we use to create a database okay so you come and say php admin and uh, it is going to take you to that place so we need to create a database which is going to support our wordpress wordpress is dynamic so i'm also going to create here and i call it student one so when i say student one it is going to create that database and that is all now after that i go ahead and i say local host and then i put student one the same student one as it was in this folder that we created here so it is going to ask us for some things it is going to ask us for the logo for, for a number of things it's going to ask us for the database name username password and the like so you just click on go the database name you put there student student one okay and then uh username is that password is that uh password is empty username you put there root yeah you put their root if you are to if you don't put correctly it's going to bring an error so it will allow and then you say run installation so we are not using internet in this uh we are not using internet i can even actually disconnect internet at this level um the internet is not necessary so once we are installing all this uh for now i'm just going to put there student one as the site title and everything I'm going to put student one here. Um, this can be done before the learner's time in the examination. So this is by the um, by the by the technician. Okay. Yeah. So I have something like that, and then I have uh, email. I just put there student one at Gmail. Here is a confirm password. Confirm with password. I can save the password so that when I click on login um when students come to log in the password will already be there so they will just be able to log in and it will take them inside the wordpress so at this stage we have installed wordpress itself but we need also to install the themes and plugins which we downloaded so that uh they are there so um i'm going to first go uh and i go to uh to plugins so i'm going to say add a new plugin so i upload I upload so uh, the plugins are the other folder which we have on our flash or we are put on the computer and um, the first plugin that I'm putting in I'm putting this one called simple static simple static is a plugin we are going to use later it's going to help us to export because we shall need to put our website on a CD and I'm also uploading another plugin um, I activate I put uh, another plugin, I call it Elementor. Elementor, I said, is going to be helping us to build the website. It has a better, um, it is a page builder, it has a better uh, way of building the, any design that we want. Of course, you may work without Elementor, WordPress alone can still work, but uh, Elementor will make it even better. So in case it brings this other page, you just close it and uh, you'll be good to go. Uh, you go come here and add another plugin and uh, this plugin you can call it um, uh, the Elementor header footer. I started with Elementor itself. Elementor header footer is in, it works together with Elementor. This one particularly helps us to edit the header and the footer. Then uh, finally I'm also uploading another plugin that uh, I installed and uh, that is the contact form and uh yeah astra was a theme so that is it and contact form will help us to create a contact form there are many other plugins we are not limiting you but these ones are basics plugins and if learners are uh, made familiar with these ones you can use them so you can see here simple static is here uh it shows it has been installed elementor is here then contact form is also here and also when i go to under appearance i find elementor header footer is also there so i'm finished installing now if I go and I click on visit site, you realize that the website is having some information. It has pictures, it has some other words. And yet I don't want, if we leave it like this, all learners, learners may fail to remove all these things and start having learners having similar work and they may say they have cheated. So it's that's why we encourage you to install a plain theme. So I'm going to go to themes and I click on add a new theme, uh, add a new theme. 
and I upload a theme that I said is the most popular theme, it's called Astra. This one is a plain theme. It will eliminate all those dummy content and make learners to be able to make their own designs, their own colors, their own images. I click on activate and then I'll have my theme. If I say visit page, I'll have my website like this. Now there is some hello world post here and there is some sample page and all these things here. Now this one here is information uh, that is in the database. If you click here on our table, which you created in PHM admin and you refresh and you click on student one, you realize that there are some tables that were created. If I click on browse, you'll find that there are some, even this hello world sample page there in the database. Yeah, so I just showed you that whatever we do is going to be put in the database. So what happens, I'm going to delete these ones also, these dummy data. So I'm going to come here where there's all posts, I delete uh all these i don't want them um i delete all these uh, dummy data okay so I, mo I move to trash um move to trash okay and then also um i go to pages i can also delete all these uh sample pages so that uh, i don't have a lot la different learners having the same things on their websites so when i do that i realize that now uh, the website is going to be plain, uh, just having student one, and then it will be good to go. So as a lab technician, I can even log out, and then I write on the blackboard, learners, student one, you go to localhost slash student one, you use your password student one, and, and that student one. So now, at this stage, I'm going to start developing the website now. I'm going to start developing. Now, this is the stage where learners start from. So... We are going to develop to design our website um, when it is mimicking uh, the website uh, that is in the expected response here. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how we can quickly um, achieve this kind of website.